Hello class, it's week eight. We've made it to week eight. We, this week we're going to cover chapter 11, which is absence. Puberty and adolescence. Puberty is a period when a person becomes able to reproduce sexually. Puberty is a period when a person becomes able to reproduce sexually. This is on page 121. So puberty, the period when a person becomes able to reproduce sexually. Adolescence is a developmental pu period between puberty and maturity that can be divided into distinct stages. Generally, it spans between the ages of 10 and 20 years. Characteristics of adolescence, they have rapid growth spurts. But they achieve their adult height. Their emotional needs predominate. Critical choices are made that affect their lives. Skills are developed as part of cognitive growth. And leadership and diplomatic abilities develop. As well as moral judgment and thinking are no longer egocentric. You know, another... Um, one may be sports becomes a very becomes a primary interest for some adolescents. Adolescents um, during this days now, um, the way we know life now, they've never known life without computers. So an adult encouragement and guidance is needed for skill development. Erickson's Erickson's theory. According to Erickson's psychosocial development theory, developmental theory, the major challenge of adolescence is the achievement of identity. Who am I? Where am I going? With whom? How am I going to get there? If this phase is not resolved, the result is role confusion. So adolescents must learn through experience that success and failure are the results of their own actions. Significant others, they have their peer groups. Peer groups have more of a lasting influence on adolescents. Their peers are more important than family. Um, you know, peers can be of great influence on the individual's present and future lifestyle choices. So necessary accommodations, they have to make life decisions, achieve personal identity, and accept responsibility. So, um, and then we, you know, according to Erickson, there are virtues are independence, self-esteem, self-reliance, self-control, devotion, and fidelity. How can we help the adolescents succeed? Provide um, privacy, encourage activities, support decisions, allow independence, give recognition and acceptance, maintain a good family atmosphere, and facilitate information gathering. Paget's theory, ages 12 to 15. This is on page 122. They, um, you know, the person from about 12 to 15 years of age, they enter stage four of the cognitive development, which is formal operations. They can think in abstract. They have the ability to develop skills to solve complex problems, and they enhance diplomatic abilities. They have that um, ability, they're able to sort through different plans and to devise different solutions to situations before they act on them. So remember Paget's theory, it is stage four of cognitive development, formal operations. They can think in abstract and develop skills to solve complex problems. Erickson's theory is 
their major challenge of adolescence is the achievement of identity of who am I, where am I going, with whom, and how am I going to get there. So stages of adolescence, we have pubescence, we have pre-adolescence or early adolescence. It's ages 11 to 14. Girls often mature faster than boys. It's um, the stage can be referred to as the awkward stage. The main characteristics of this stage is their desire for independence. They waver between the desire for independence and trust from their families and silliness and playfulness and a need for regular approval. They take frequent flights of independence, but have a strong need to return to the nest for guidance and encouragement. Patience is essential during this stage they need strong family support and guidance. Sources of conflict, though, during this stage can be invasion of household tasks, rebellion against the authority figures, and quarrels with siblings. By age 14, they become more accepting of other people and more conscious of what makes them unique. They have that ability to understand the feelings and behaviors of others, they begin to develop better relationships with siblings. They like them a lot better than they thought they did. They're able to express ideas, debate concepts, and verbalize opinions. And verbalizing ideas is a true growth characteristic and developmental achievement. Middle adolescence is ages 15 to 17. So they exhibit behavior typical of the adolescence, introspection and fluctuation in self-assurance. They have a formation of ideas and plan for the future. Family members sometimes feel rejected as they feel they don't meet the perfectionist standards of middle teenagers. And by age 17, they'll, they, have an, they exhibit true attitudes of maturity. Challenges during ages 15 to 17 can be physical alterations, loud self-assertion, self-preoccupation, mood swings, rapid shifts between dependent and independent attitudes. You know, so sometimes it's just you never know at that age group. Um, with that age group, they value the ability to depend on home and school. They need to counterbalance security with independence. They may seek guidance away from home. They may take more responsibility for self-care and personal cleanliness. And they may even seek part-time employment. And then they tend to have friendships with many people of both sexes. Now we have late adolescence, which is ages 18 to 20. They grapple with typically adult or mature issues. They physically move away from familiar people, place, and things. And they develop better relationships with their parents and other family members. Relationships are important. Social circles expand and their interests change. Um, sometimes when their, you know, their social circle expands and their interest changes, they sometimes, they make time for chores and hobbies. There are moral questions and issues involving ethical decisions, making gain relevance. Um, so, you know, between, like I say, between 18 and 20, they start grappling with typical adult or mature issues. <clears throat> Physical growth for adolescents. By age 11, girls reach about 90% of adult height, where boys reach about 80% of adult height. Full height is achieved around age 21. They have all their permanent teeth except for their second and third molars by age 12. They also have an increase in glandular activity, which causes sweat and body odor. 
Um, hormonal changes control growth and other physical aspects. Can be responsible for acne in some adolescents. Growth of body hair occurs and reproductive organs grow to adult size. Sexual development in adolescent boys. Enlargement of testicles and penis. Physical growth varies markedly in 12-year-old boys, so changes in the appearance of the scrotum, appearance of pubic hair, spontaneous erections, and nocturnal emission, which is just a normal part of reproductive health. And that is a change that occurs during adolescence. Appearance of chin whiskers, deepening of the voice, and strong muscular appearance. Most boys grow at the age of 14 than any other age. And by 16, most of them are close to the adult height. Sexual development in adolescent girls, rapid growth in signs of approaching sexual maturity, breast and hip development may be noticeable, appearance of pubic hair, onset of menstruation or their menarches may be irregular, Nor their normal cycle may not be established for a few years. Secondary sex, ca sex characteristics are those of an adult. By age 14, physical appearance of young, they have that physical appearance of young women. Few girls grow in height after 14. So the sexual development in adolescent girls, breast and hip development, appearance of pubic hair, and irregular um, menstruations. So. Those are just three topics that I want you to remember. Sexual identity and orientation. Sexual identity may be confusing. Most realize that their sexual orientation during their teen years. Fear of rejection by family, friends, and community may lead to suffering and unhappiness. And they're at risk for alienation, doubt, and depression at a time where they have a need for self-acceptance and sense of belonging. Sex education. Family caregivers and trusted adults, you must give accurate information. You need, they need information on how STDs are spread, explain the role of birth control, provide information about sex and pregnancy, Review changes that occur within the body. Incorrect beliefs may develop from information received from peer groups. Sexually active adolescents need counseling about prevention of STIs and forms of birth control. Only abstinence is 100% effective against pregnancies and STDs. We need to provide education regarding the appropriate use of condoms. Um, fail to use birth control can be related to embarrassment or feelings of insecurity. La the, their lack of knowledge can lead to unsafe sexual activities. And if adolescents are not given accurate information, they will seek answers elsewhere. And parents should be the primary source of information, but nurses are also a reliable source. Psychosocial development. The major task is to form a sense of identity. Fitting in is gr of great importance to most adolescents. Expressions of rebellion against parents, teachers, and others are common. Um, group conformity, like I said, they want to fit in. You know, they, they um, at that age, they just want to fit into a certain group. And, you know, peer, their peers are very, very important. Family relationships. 
um, can influence lifetime interpersonal success because they foster self-esteem and respect for and from others. Respect from others is essential to mean psychological and emotional health. They, you know, um, their attitudes towards their younger siblings. You know, they alternate between protectiveness and annoyance. Their attitudes towards family caregivers range from harsh criticism and displeasure to genuine understanding and great love. Influence lifetime interpersonal success. Caregivers have to recognize the need for self-assertion, privacy, information, acceptance, experimentation, and growth and development. Peer relationships. Their friendships, they have school cliques, they're common. They may have um, one or two best friends. Dating, um, most experience, their first steady relationship. Peer pressure and risk-taking. Risk-taking, they, risk-taking behaviors. They're not fully, fully knowledgeable of possible consequences of their actions. They have a sense of immortality. They're often competitive. The family can help overcome peer pressure by modeling safe habits and practice. Um, have active non-judgmental listening and providing positive reinforcement. You know, um, active listening, non-judgmental. We want to encourage the adolescents to seek well-informed sources for guidance. You know, and non-judgmental listening is often more productive than dictating the hazards of risky behaviors. An effective approach would be to make the teenager feel like they're part of the solution. But there will be consequences for inappropriate behavior. You know, peer pressure can especially lead to vulnerable, unsafe situations, such as drugs, drinking, and driving. Their food and eating habits. They have special nutritional needs. They have poor dietary habits that lead to fatigue, healthy, unhealthy appearance, and susceptibility to illness, such as diabetes. Teenage boys normally have a really huge appetite. They're concerned with achieving a muscular appearance, so they consume a lot of protein, drinks, and go to the gym to pump up. Teenage girls are also concerned about their appearance. They may become anorexic or bulimic, can emerge during this stage, and it can occur in both male and females. Their body image. They develop physically and socially at various rates. Key factors in developing a positive body image is the degree of affection and mutual respect between caregivers and adolescents. Home support is invaluable. They'll have fluctuations in their behavior, which is just a normal part of growing up, but um, provide positive family experiences. And as nurses with adolescents, we just have to be prepared to answer questions because you never know what type of questions they may throw out at you. Um, you know, we also, adolescent concerns about growth and development, development of healthy habits, safety measures with motor vehicles, importance of scholastic and skill achievement, importance and development of self-respect, Selection of peers as friends, wise counseling about sex and sexuality, and problems that arise from substance use and abuse. These are all areas of concern for adolescents. And that is the end of chapter 11 for week 8. You guys have a great week.